I wanted to say that I, I, I wanted to share this with you, have this conversation with you about what John Henry Newman has written about the Benedictine charism and Benedictine education, which I've been reading recently, and I believe you have as well. And what struck me in these, I'd say, lesser known essays by Newman about Benedict, he makes this claim that the Benedictine charism is relevant, or what, what really makes the Benedictine charism special, he calls it, the Benedictine charism, he calls poetry. Now, by poetry, he doesn't mean that Benedictines spend all day writing poems. He means poetry in this ancient classical philosophical sense. I've also happened to have been reading recently Jacques Maritain on poetry and creative intuition. And what Maritain means by poetry, and I think this is what Newman means when he says that the Benedictine charism is about uh, poetry. Poetry is, or poetic knowledge, is understanding the creative intuition that emanates from the soul of the person, a kind of pre-conscious activity that expresses itself in a work. Now, Newman and Maritain are distinguishing poetry from mystical knowledge, as important as that is, knowledge of experience of God in our soul. That's not what they're talking about when they talk about poetic knowledge. They're talking about a kind of creative intuition of the soul that expresses itself, works itself out through the practical intellect into a painting, a poem, but also manual labor, working the land, craft, cooking. Um, and through this, the self, the soul, is encountering the world of objects, and then from that, contemplating those objects and bringing them back into a deeper understanding inside of the soul, right? So maybe let's talk a little bit about what does Newman mean when he says the Benedictine charism is poetry. Another way to see it might be, and I learned this from my visits to Benedictine monasteries, that Benedictines take the idea of Lexio Divina, a kind of contemplative reading of scripture, and they apply that to all activity. So what do you think this kind of, this idea about Benedictine charism as poetry or the importance of poetic forms of knowledge? Well, I would imagine that what Numa means is that, you know, po poetry is a form of knowledge which is essentially symbolic and through the evocation of language. So it's not through intellectual elaboration primarily. And if I remember the piece that you quoted, Newman says that the Benedictines, it's not that they don't value reason, but they just choose not to use it intellectually as a priority. You know I mean? They say like one chooses what to use. If you think of reason as, as a tool, you can use different tools. And out of this toolbox of life, what I think Newman is saying is that St. Benedict, chose to use again the tool of intuition through symbols through work you know if you think of agriculture or uh, you know the the, the 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 cycle of the seasons or the the, the cycle of the life in, in a community all these things are charged with symbolic meanings so uh, you don't need to use the tool of theology for example if you go through if you have a deep awareness of the things that happen, right? Or the, the, or the of, you know, can say the, the harvest, or the, or the, the meal together, or uh, the, the sacraments, or all these things. All these things carry in themselves all the meaning. I mean, they are a prefiguration of heaven in one way or another, and one does not be necessary to articulate it intellectually. In, in some circumstances, intellectual articulation is important and necessary, but in other cases, it's more important to go through the experience directly with attention. So I would say that what we are talking about is, if you wish, a, a discipline of attention, because through attention, the symbolic balance, the symbolic uh, load uh, of, of, the, of the facts of nature and, com and community life will come to you. And, and, and this again is something that everybody can do, even if they are not intellectuals. You know, there, there is a room for teaching orders for people who write books of theology. But again, if we are talking about uh, something that is accessible to everyone, certainly a poetic method is more practical. I mean, think of the ancient people again at the, at the beginning of civilization. The way culture expresses was through epics. You know, like an epic poem 
was the soul of a people, was something that united the people in a common awareness, mm. not uh, philosophers. Then philosophy is kind of a late fruit, if you wish. Wow. That's really interesting, Carlo. You know, I was um, talking recently with Dana Joya. He is a poet, um, business person as well, turned poet, former director of the National Endowment of the Arts. And he was the one who suggested I read Jacques Maritain on poetic knowledge and creative intuition. And I think what you've just described is that in part, what makes the Benedictine charism, why I think it's coming back a little bit is that we live in a culture where scientific forms of knowledge or conceptual forms of knowledge, by which I mean the ability to create abstractions and accurately describe the world through concepts is prized. But poetic forms of knowledge, experiencing things, being in the moment, looking deeply into things has really receded in education and in culture. You said something about attentiveness, right? The Benedictine charism of attentiveness to little things. We live in a culture that has a crisis of attention. Everywhere you turn, people are writing about this and talking about this. So again, drawing on the Maritan book, Creative Intuition, um, you know, he defines poetry as proceeding from the totality of the human person, this place where sense, imagination, intellect, love, desire, all come together. And so I think what has been lost in our modern culture is, as you said, this understanding of the poetic dimension of the human person.